Guys, so listen, let me tell you a little bit about Tom Busby. So I know Tom for probably close to 15, maybe 20 years now. Oh, the time is flying. Uh, one of the pioneers of futures trading. You know him for, you've probably seen him at every single expo. I've done so many events with Tom. Uh, he's just a, there's only, there's only probably a few people I would ever recommend to teach futures and options, and he's a top guy on the list, especially having the experience that he has. Uh, we've done so many events together. Everyone has taken his courses, have taken my courses. We're very, very similar on the way we educate, but also, most importantly, we have the same mentality, how we teach our traders how to be very successful um, in what we do every day. He's got a great facility down there in Mobile, Alabama. And um, like I said, he's probably one of the most well-known, most respected in the education community. So uh, without uh, – don't want to take too much time from Tom. Tom, let's pass the mic over to you, and uh, let's just start sharing your screen. Guys, enjoy, and then I'll be coming back at 1 and doing and finishing up uh, to, telling you about a little about day trading. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the presentation. Hey, thanks, Fausto. Can everybody hear me okay? I always like to ask that question because I, sometimes I get going and then the next thing you know, people say, what did you say? Uh, yeah, I've been doing this a while and, uh, you know, in that, in that experience that I have, I've learned, I think, how to teach the art of trading. And in fact, if you ever come to Mobile, you'll look out front on one of our bylines on our sign is teaching the art of trading. Now, there's risk involved in trading and depending on whether you're a short-term trader or swing trader or a long-term trader, there's a lot of different ways, what I would say, to uh, make money. And you know, even short-term trading is divided in real short-term trading. Some people call it scalp trading and, and everything, but uh, day trading and then maybe, you know, two-day trading or, or a week trading. I prefer the week, okay? The week is a sort of a Cadillac version of trading, but I can still trade the short term if I need to. And in fact, I just completed a series I called Moneyball with my people, and they loved it because they've never seen me trade that way uh, in the short term. And so there's a lot of different things you can do as a trader. And uh, as Fausto said, we have spent a lot of time together over the years. I first met him years ago out in Las Vegas, and we were both doing a radio show in Texas, and we had a reason to talk to each other, and we did, and became fast friends and presented together in Canada and all over America. So let me get into this after risk. You decide right now how much you're willing to risk when you take a trade. You have to do that. I can't do that. Fausto can't do it. You have to decide because there's a level really not based on your bank account, but based on your emotional account. And let me define what I'm talking about. You will decide what you can take as a loss because there will be losses in trading. Anybody that says, hey, there's no losses, hadn't been around for 40 plus years like me. You have losses, but you got to be able to overcome those losses. Using the, uh, you know, October to December timeframe, worst market since 1931. So you got to be able to live through those environments to pop out on the other end and do like I do. I charge an interest if they take my money. Okay. So that's my game. And that's what I've been playing since 1987. All right. So been around a while. I like to tell people I was in the United States Air Force. The reason I like to tell you that I'm proud of my service, but at the same time, I'm happy what I learned. I learned that everything, where it comes for what you do on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, or yearly basis, you've got to formulate a process. And trading's no different. You have to learn a process in entry, a process in monitoring, and a process in exiting. Anybody tells you there's a shortcut to that, have, hasn't been successful trading. There's a process there. I've been trading actively since the 70s. In fact, I'm still a member of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and I have three books, Winning the Day Trading Game, The Markets Never Sleep, and Trade to Win. I am partial to the first book, Winning the Day Trading Game, because that sort of tells you how I went from not knowing uh, that a pork belly was a commodity to being a professional trader. Uh, it's an interesting journey. My first two stocks I bought were Eastern Airlines and Pan Am. 
If you come to my office in Mobile, you'll see one oven on the uh, wall to remind me there's no such thing as a sure deal, okay? You've got to always go in with your eyes wide open as you're doing it. The market never sleeps is about my experience I had with Globex, the forerunner to electronic trading, and how the 24-hour market improves your odds of success if you know the exact times. And then, of course, the last book, uh, I was working with Options Express at the time. That was a brokerage firm that uh, had a leader, Ned Bennett, a great guy. And anyway, that book's about the attitude it takes to succeed. You know, it's not always it's not always straight from the way you start to the way you finish. It's to make sure you finish. Okay. Now, where I start my story from is 1987. At the time, I was a Wall Street broker, and I thought I knew everything about making money. Everything. Arrogant. Nobody could tell me a thing. I knew exactly what worked and how to work. Well, let me tell you, 1987 on that Monday, that October 19th day, taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about myself. To recover from that and what happened on those three days, okay, says a lot about you and who you are because I was in the pits of hell after that three days. I'd lost a lot of money personally, and I didn't realize just how much risk there was in what I call the overnight approach to trading. It happened. And in that case, it was fast. Now, people look back on it today and they go, oh, that, that was just a correction. And, it, it, you know, I guess on a long-term chart it was. But when you lose 22% in a day, think about that today. Do the math on it. How many points on the Dow would it be today to lose 22% uh, percent in one day? So put puts everything, you know, like when you're down 5% for the month like we are right now, puts things in perspective. When you go through that, I came out of it and I came out of it a better trader and more understanding of how this game works. That was my commitment. Now, this is a new product that I, that I opened up about 60 days ago. It's called T-Buzz TV. It's where I take all that experience and put it in a two minute video that goes out in the morning before the market opens. Uh, we just exceeded 5,000 people. 5,000 people have signed up for my T-Buzz TV, and I would encourage you to sign up. Uh, do it right now while you're thinking about it. It takes about a minute, and you'll get my video every morning. You will find out. I will focus where the meat is, okay? They say, where's the meat? Remember the old Win it was a Wendy's commercial? Where's the meat? I tell you where the meat is every morning before the market opens, and you can do it right here in there. Guess what? No cost. No cost. It's just totally free. But you do have to make the effort to fill out the joining process. It takes about two minutes. Adam says it takes about 10 seconds. It takes me about two minutes, okay? But anyway, there it is, T-Buzz TV. Now, let's discuss the current market. Hard to trade the treat, the treat world, isn't it? You know, you got a plan like today, the market's going up. It's been making high after high. It's the first two-day run that we've had in May. And all of a sudden, you go from 2,800 on the S&P to 2,890. Pretty good. Pretty impressive. In fact, if we keep going like this, we might make it back to the monthly open, which is 2,955. Amazon, if you watch Amazon stock today, it's surging. It's 1,911. You watch some of these stocks like uh, Zoom, it's up 6 or $7 today. So the point is, you got to be around for these kind of days if you play from the long side, okay? And I think that you just got to be able to see that trend, stay with that trend, and have money allocation to meet that trend. DTI has been around for a long time. I told you about the crash. I'll tell you, I formulated a method out of the crash that works like a charm. It works long term. It works swing. And it really works long short term if you're a short term trader. So it works 
no matter what kind of time frame you have. It's tailored to show you the style and the approach to take to win, okay? To be in that top 5% of people that make money. Now, this is my number one rule in trading. I tell people all the time, learn this rule and make your life a lot simpler. My number one rule in trading is follow the S&P. Right now, today, the S&P is at 28.90. It's rising. It opened at 28.53. 75% of all stocks you check today are going to be higher. Why is that? Because that's the way it works, folks. It works from the S&P futures. And so you got to keep this up. You got to follow the S&P. And when I talk about the stock market, I tell you it's going higher. I'm talking about the S&P because that pulls stocks up. And I love trading stocks. Love trading options. Heck, I love trading futures. Okay. The next important thing I focus on is time. There's time of day. You say, time of day, what is he talking about? Well, there's a 24-hour market you got to learn. Time of week, certain days are more powerful than other days to trade. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that. I can prove it to you. And finally, I focus on time of month. What cycle are we in and where we're at? And I got techniques and tools that I teach for all that because I'm going to be right four out of five times. Markets never sleep, and the best way to think about it is through the eyes of the reference bars. Reference bars is a term I created to show people the separation of the markets around the world. This is my clock. This is how it works. Notice that we start in the evening, five o'clock in the evening, and we go to 3.30 in the morning. There's two primary markets we focus on during that time frame. You might have heard of it. The Nikkei opens about 7 o'clock. The Hang Seng opens about 8.30. And then they run and control the world. I always say go where the sun is to about 3.30 in the morning. At 3.30 in the morning, we focus on four European indexes. The DAX, my favorite of all. The FTSE the Swiss, and the CAC, okay? I think that's important. And then finally, we get into the day market. It's when New York starts getting up, and I call this the New York market, 8.30 to 12. So far, New York came in with guns a-blazing, and the next thing you know, we're up here at 28.91. The reference bar pointed out this, and I always ask people, could you have made money if you would have known at 8.45 this morning that this market was going to have a strong four hours up? That's the simple question. Could you have made money? Probably went and bought a stock and made money off of it because most stocks have moved up during this time frame. Now, here's the real key. Two things happen at 1230. 1230 Central Time, not 1230 Eastern Time. These are all Central Times. We go into the afternoon market and We're going to find out if this trend you're looking at in the morning is going to last in the afternoon by looking at that 30-minute period from 1230 to 1. That's called reference bar 4, the last one of the day, and will give us a point to where we're going in the afternoon. So do we hold these stocks we bought in the morning? We'll find out about 1 o'clock, okay? That's the way it works. It's pretty simple, straightforward, but it works, folks. That's the best thing about it. There's the times. You might write those down, take a picture with your your uh, camera. But those are the times that define the day, okay? So when I say I'm day trading, am I day trading or am I trading in Asia? If I'm day trading or am I trading in Europe? Or am I day trading am I trading in New York? Or I'm day trading, trading in California? This is how I define each and every day. Now, The DTI code is very simple, and I want you to write this down also. You take the yearly open. You take the monthly open. Connect those dots. Are we higher at the start of May than we were at the year? Of course we are. The trend is higher. So you play, as Livermore did, the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance is up, and so we're going to play the market up. 
during this time frame, okay? And we find that so interesting when you're able to do that. Now, any questions about that? Because that's a, such a key point, okay? Such a key point. I'm going to pause for a second. I'll be giving you a lot of stuff. Let you digest it a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to go put on a tray. <laughs> I've got the roadmap helping me uh, monitor all this stuff. And Apple just flashed a buy signal. And so I'm going to go on Apple and, you know, take what I call a little run here with Apple. There you go. Done. Okay. So you look at the weekly open and the weekly open will define, you know, where we're at. So the question I would ask you, are we higher than where we started the week? Yeah, we're higher. So stocks that are higher also are going to respond well to being higher for the week. Now, I tell people, think in these terms. There's five simple steps. If I had you for a couple hours, would change the way you trade, okay? Five simple straight, uh, five simple steps, okay? I would think you, everybody here, you know, a phone number's got 10 digits in it when you think the area code. So you ought to, this is half of, of remembering a phone number. So next time you think about somebody's phone number, I want you to think about my five steps to success of trading. It's like counting to five can make you money. Here we go. Number one, I have a piece or a tool, okay, that will allow me to determine where other items based on the S&P will be if we go to certain numbers. For example, we're at 2892 right now. If we went to 2898, I could put that in here and it would predict exactly how high Apple would go. Now, I don't have it live for you, but I'm going to do it and give you the exact number off of a live roadmap, okay? I'll just do target there. And let's say the S&P went to 28.98. Everybody following that? So if the S&P goes up six points from here, I would say that Apple, okay, uh, not 28.98, yeah, 28. Yeah, 98. If it goes up 28, 98, then I'd look over at Apple and I'd say Apple, which right now is at 192, will be at 193.10. So I could buy Apple, sell Apple, probably during this presentation if the S&P goes up another four or five points. That's how it works. So this is one of my secrets is my tool out of the roadmap. I call it the moneymaker. Takes about five minutes to learn how to do what I just did. Secondarily, I put the high and low of the S&P in the moneymaker where I see the high and low to be. And that comes from the software too. But right now, the next resistance is 2898. I'll just tell you that. Take my word for it. And then I use options or stocks to make money off that. Now, this is a real play I taught some people this morning how to do. I said, you know, you could do this with real tight options and make a lot more money by leverage, if you like that. And I showed people how to do that, okay? But it's simple to do, and it's nothing hard about it. Get the direction of the market up. Get the direction that's going to stay up to 1230, right? That's when we have to reevaluate, and we execute the trade. Now, finally, there are certain days you ought to write these days down. If you join my program today, I make a big deal about these two days. Every month they're different, but there's two days that I call it. There's two days that I call are money days, the no brainer type days. The guys, even the stupidest trader can make money if they'll listen to where to get in and where to get out. So in May, we have two days. One is the 28th, the other one's the 30th. Okay. And I'll show you how it works if you become part of the DTI group. Now, there's the clock that we follow. Right now, we're in U.S. morning. I have a chart up, okay, 
And if you dial that in there, you will see that we're approaching the top end of the buy zone or our target. And that's why if the market does creep up another few points and make it makes it 98 without a correction, uh, that'd be OK. But I just wanted you to know what I'm looking at today. Above the reference bar. Now, simple option analysis involves which options do you buy? Which options do you sell? OK, so I go to and you probably got a option. What I would call a option chain. And I would teach you and show you how this works. If you look there at on this particular one, a 205, 202 and a half with a buy signal on Apple, you could do a put spread if we were above 205 and 202 and a half. Since Apple is way below that, we'd have to get a current one up here, but it would work the same way on Thursday to Friday. If you like making money from Thursday to Friday, I hadn't met many traders that don't like making money from Thursday to Friday. Now, it's simple. You can buy the stock. OK. Apple's going up a dollar. You could sell puts. That's a bullish strategy. Or you could buy calls and make money on it. Not hard if you get the direction right. That's step number three. Step number four, using that DTI code, we're higher than a week. Hey, we're higher than the day. That even takes it to DEFCON 4, okay? This baby is uh, really looking good. Now, here's an example with Amazon. Here's a recent trade I made on Amazon. It opened the year at 1465. It opened this month at 1933. It opened a week at 1946. So I asked people, how would you like to be long option stock or sold puts on Amazon this week? This week, if you achieve those numbers, well, guess what? Amazon is 1913 right now, 1913 right now. This is May numbers. We get above 1946 and you got to trade there for this week. All you got to do is wait and see if it happens. OK, 1946 is the breakout number for Amazon. That's when I'll do a whole bunch of option strategies for Amazon. The roadmap will also give you buy signals that come to you. Basic option strategies to take advantage of. That's when it was at 1949, went to 1957. Now, this was on that particular day using the same thing I just told you, okay? I said, here's a way to experience. This was on the 3rd of May, okay? The 3rd of May. I made $4,000 over the course of that day following what I just told you. Does that get your attention? It should, okay? Because let me tell you, this is something that is what I call uh, the bread and butter of making money with options using stocks. Okay, Wall Street versus my street. Let me give you an example of what I call perceived risk with options and real risk. Wall Street teaches that if you sell a spread for $2.50 spread and you get two and a quarter net, okay, you got 25 cents of risk or vice versa. If you get 25 cents, you got 225. I call that perceived risk, okay? I call that perceived risk, okay? And the reason I do that is because there's a thing called real risk that brings in skill level, brings in time of week, brings in the roadmap plan, brings in a lot of stuff to help you, okay? But that is called perceived versus real risk, okay? Wall Street will tell you, oh, there's two dollars and a quarter cent of risk. There's not two dollars and a quarter risk because you're not going to keep that thing if it goes against you anyway. OK, so here's a question that Wayne asked. He says, why are we looking at most expensive stocks in the market? Does it matter what kind of stocks you look at? If you have a way to trade the low price ones to the high price ones, 
does it matter? It doesn't, does it? Because if you get the direction right for a small stock, you make money. If you get the direction right for a big stock, you make money. Okay? Uh, I like to use stocks that have very liquid options. You know, uh, and the reason I do that is because I run a hedge fund also, and I like to have stocks that can take volume that go into my analysis. And that's one reason that I'm pretty familiar with these bigger stocks. But I'm also familiar with low price stocks too. It all works the same way. It's just numbers. Don't discriminate against making money. That's what I would tell you. Now, money management. That's a key part of any setup that you do. you got to have money management. Everything can go wrong no matter how good you are. And so that is what I call the money management portion of trading. What you want to do is make a realistic appraisal of the risk, a realistic appraisal of the war reward, and then you want to follow that through a trading process. For example, if I enter something, I know where I'm going with it, target. I know where I'm wrong. Two great questions to ask yourself, no matter what you enter, whether it's a small stock or a big stock, okay? All right, well, so if you were part of T-Buzz, I would text out to you, here's a trade. You'd get it on your phone, an 1855 put. This is a real live trade that we did. And bought it 18. We got 30 cents. It expired on May the 10th. And uh, everybody know what that's worth right now? About zero, okay? Because it was a good trade. But that's how it would work if you were out there. Now, my summary is you study the market, use the money maker portion of the tool. You time the market using my method of timing. You use simple option analysis to find out which option to buy, which option to sell. Use expert risk management. I'll teach you that. And you manage your money according to the way that fits your goals. So let me ask the question. What's a good return for you? What's a good return? Don't talk daily. Don't talk weekly. Talk over the course of a year. And let me tell you something before you tell me an answer. Do you realize that the S&P, a year ago was trading at the same price. So if you look at the S&P from a year ago, you bought the S&P, you watched it go up, you watched it go down, it's still about the same price we started. Sort of defeats that long-term trading stuff when you think about it that way, doesn't it? Took all that risk and didn't get paid. I say don't work for free. So I put these concepts into action. And in a live market, and each Tuesday, I do my live trading in my Connect the Dot session and lay out this week's potential profits. So, T Buzz, this is my program. This is a good way to get to know me. It's my pride and joy of what I've been doing. I've been doing it for five years. Pretty good at it, folks. Pretty good. It's a way to text out trades I find for you that you can take. Using options, you can also use stocks, but use options to make the most money. That's leverage. And it works this way. On Sunday night, I lay out the week. I tell people how I'm going to play this week. I did it this Sunday night. And my people this week in T-Buzz are sitting on a bunch of profits because I laid out a great plan. I do it each Sunday night. Okay? It takes about 30 minutes. I lay it out. On Monday, I give you a pivot number. The pivot number is important because the pivot number is going to help you make money. Above it, that's when you get long. Below it, you get cautious. Tuesday, we go live. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we call it payday. Okay? People seem to like it. They love it. I will tell you this. People that are part of T-Buzz stay with me because I follow these simple rules. Okay? And that is, we're going to make money each week, and each week we're going to take the action that goes on, whatever they give us, and deal with it. Starts on Sunday night, finishes up on Friday. I review news, seasonality, any other items that are important to the current market. Here's next week. 
This starts Sunday night. I'll go through my detailed plan. If I look at it off the top of the thing, Monday's not that big. Tuesday, not much on Tuesday. Wednesday, you got retail sales. Thursday, Philadelphia Fed, housing starts. Today, housing numbers are good. That'll be another number. And that big number, consumer sentiment on Friday. So next week is weighted towards the second half of the week. Now, here's the seasonality. This is taken out of the Trader's Almanac, but what we've learned to do is blend it. And any days that are above 50, the odds are in your favor. For the market going higher, below 50, the odds are that the market will go lower. So you can see Monday here is a very weak Monday, which means it sets up the Tuesday trade. Okay? That's what it means. Friday is pretty good, close to even. And so I would say Tuesday and Friday are your big chances to see the market go up. But I'm looking at the market there, and it looks like a pretty weak week overall, which might be that we're going to rush it this week and then correct it next week. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, the pivot numbers are sent out on Monday. I'll do that. You'll have it. That pivot numbers will help you trade, and you'll use those numbers for being long or being out. This week's pivot number was 2862. We passed 28.62 this morning, and look what's happened since we've done. It's done nothing but go straight up, okay? And so all these positions that we put on when that happened are paying big time. On Tuesday, we connect the dots. Here's a couple stocks that were long, okay? Apple, look at that, 187 we got long. Amazon, that was a big play this week on the options. And then, of course, Union Pacific, another big play right there. Okay? Three setups for this week that we talked about. Now, I will have what is known as a special flash meeting inside of TBOs. This is when I see something that, hey, that my granddaughter could make money with. By the way, she is seven years old, a smart cookie, and I've taught her how to trade. And it's basically she could make money with what the flash meetings are held about. Okay? Hey. You've got to take advantage of this particular situation. You get notified, we do it. That was one that we took on Amazon on the 8th. Again, paid 11, sold it for 30. Now, here's a review of T-Buzz to give you some flavor of what I'm talking about and just how good it is. I know of no other program on the planet is this transparent, this straightforward, and this easy to follow, okay? Took us years to get it this way. App, trade, 200, 131%. Using 10 lots, okay? Not a lot of money. QQQ, 8.4%. Lulu, 123%. Amazon, these are option returns. This is pretty good stuff. With T-Buzz, you write your own ticket. Some people start out with five contracts, two contracts, and some people do 10. Some people do 100 because they've got that much faith in what we're doing, okay? Now, I have a trial. I'd like you to sign it for a year, but I know that you got to see it, taste it, and feel it, and watch your account grow. So I'd like you to sign up for the trial, which is three months. It includes 12 weeks working with me. 12 live sessions, and a minimum of 12 flash meetings over that period of time. I will exceed that, I'm sure. Plus, I'm going to teach a how to day trade options. I know how to do it, and every now and then I get on a topic, say, hey, why don't we day trade? So if you're using stocks to day trade, this works great for you if they have options. I'll teach you how to day trade it. And hopefully results like this. This is one of my customers. He started with a $2,000 account. He sent it to me. He said, Tom, I'm up $19,000 this year. That's a pretty good return, I would say. $2,000 he had in his account. Everybody see that? $19,000. That's a real customer. By the way, we limit this to 10 because we only take 10 at a time. And 
Then we have to put you on a waiting list, and then you'll be called next time we offer it because we have to look at our total pool of people in that we're going to support. Our support is fantastic, and I would tell you, okay, I would tell you take one of these slots, okay? It's simple. I, I work on the scholarship basis, and here's the way that works. You're paying me $600 to get into one of the best text and trade services on the planet. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to show you how in that first week to 10 days, how to make that money back based on your experience and your knowledge. Okay. And that's the way it's going to work. S. Wells, are you a client of mine? Aren't you a client of mine? I just saw you asked a question. He wanted to know what Apple trade I was making. Let's see if he answers me. I don't know if that's the one that's a client of mine, but I think he as well as it. I don't know. Did he did S. Wells type anything? Who knows? Did S. Wells type anything? I was going to. Wayne, I answered your question, didn't I? Oh, you're in TGAS, right? Yeah, okay. Well, given your evaluation, how good am I? Tell him. He watches all my videos and meetings. I do a lot of them. Yep. Perfect. Oh, it goes from the top to the bottom. Hi. Procrastination. Let me tell you about procrastination. I like using this because it's a great story. If you procrastinate, it will cost you money this afternoon. Why do I know that? Because I know when we get to get to Europe, or not Europe, get to the afternoon, there's going to be another opportunity. and in T-Buzz, I will call a flash meeting, and we'll take advantage of it. That's why I know what it costs you. And it takes Adam a little time to get you loaded into the, the system. But uh, this afternoon, I will do my setup from Thursday to Friday. I have a classic setup I do on Thursdays. I'll do it this afternoon. So that's why I know it's going to cost you money. There you go. He said first trade made was over 100%. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And uh, you're, how would you describe yourself as far as uh, experience? Scott, trading weekly options. I love trading weekly options. In fact, as I've been sitting here on the uh, talking about this, a lot of my weekly options are getting to the point I've got to, got to go closing out, but they're looking really good, okay? Uh, but I start out with where they open the week at. And that's what Tuesday's all about, Scott, is what sets up that week out of the 10. I, I only follow about 10 stocks, and I do it. Barry, I'd like to thank you for joining. There's a guy that can't do, you know, delay. Let's do this. Send Barry a copy of the Trader's Almanac where he's got it to guide. I got an extra copy here. I'll send Barry for being number one. Uh, Adam, we'll be doing a flash meeting today in T-Buzz at 2.30. Let all the T-Buzz people know. That's a private room. It didn't describe it. But we have a private room and everybody hangs out. There you go. There you go. Yes, Patrick, because I'm, I'm very, one thing that you'll find about me after the crash of 87, I have so much respect for people that don't have a lot of money. I orient everything I do to the small player. I got a lot of big players. Like I told you, I run a hedge fund, but I really, okay, focus on the small people. Cause one time when I lost all my money, I was very small. I didn't even have $2,000, you know. It was tough, but I'll show you how to allocate it, and you'll work it up. You saw Hugh there. He was 
Hugh had 2,000 he started with. There's an example. Now, Hugh listens and takes the trades. That's the other thing you got to do. You got to listen and take the trades. You'll start out about two contracts. And then after you go about 10 trades, you'll step it up to four. After you, your count doubles or whatever, you'll step it up to five. After your count doubles again, you'll step it up to 10. You'll be there. Because I don't, on the options I use, I don't maximize you out at the same time. I'm a big recycler. And recycle to me means you use the same money over and over again. That's my definition of recycling. All right, folks, I'm about to wrap it up. Any other questions anybody has? Yeah, Barry, I get to know you. Where are you from, Barry? Oh, man. Let me tell you my New York story. You'll love this. As Fausto said, I used to travel around the country and speak. And I was in New York one time, and I had a, I had a rough crowd. That crowd in New York was rough, you know, me being a southern guy, right? And everybody was talking, and they wasn't listening too much. I said, let me tell you what I love about New Yorkers, okay? And uh, here's what I love. New Yorkers, on average, wake up about 6 o'clock in the morning. And I said, what I do in Mobile is I get up a little earlier than that. And here's what I do. I watch the overseas markets, and I get my positions on. And then as New York shows up and wakes up, I sell my positions to those New Yorkers. I've been taking advantage of New Yorkers for a long time. Just because I wake up earlier. One guy at the break pulls me aside. He said, hey, I want to sign up for your program because I like your thinking. Staying ahead of the crowd. I said, absolutely. So I love New Yorkers. Always have. Let me do this for everybody that joins today. Adam, this is just for these people, though, okay? All right? Anybody that joins today, anybody joins today, that I don't document that you made what you paid me to join over the three months that you're with me, okay? I'll give you your money back. How about that? That gives me three months to exceed your expectations. Adam, just for the people in this group, okay? I'll do that. I don't do that anymore. I did it about four or five years ago. I said, I'll do that today. I'm feeling very generous because as I'm sitting here, I'm having a pretty good day. That would get all the procrastinators and skepticism of people off. I love Fausto's crowd. Like he said, a lot of Fausto's customers take my courses, take his courses. And that's one thing me and Fausto ought to do again is a joint course sometime. You know, we ought to do that. He's great. All right, folks, I guess I'm about done, aren't I? Any other questions before I go? Are you willing to learn, Mark? Are you willing to learn to trade options? I have Adam send you a link to a simple option course I put together. 
And you'll know after taking that where you are to sign up for T-Buzz. But I think you'll be fine doing it if, you, if you're willing to learn. Well, why don't you send that link to Mark and Patrick, my simple option course, okay? Send Adam your email, and he'll send the link to you for that simple option course. Well, here's an insight for everybody. This market is going to go higher from here, meaning we will have a good second half of the year. Okay? A good second half. Here's an insight. And here's another insight. Walmart reported record earnings today. You are listening to my T-Buzz TV. Walmart is going to go to 110. I want to thank Thing, thing Doe and Carl Griever for joining. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Last call for those that want to make money. <laughs> Isn't that right, Adam? Adam says, Adam says, yeah, come look at his account. Uh, last call. Perfect. All right, with that said, everybody, uh, thanks, Tom, for being here. It's been a great uh, great experience. Great to hear you again. It's always nice. And, you know, it's so funny that uh, what Tom was mentioned earlier is that, uh, I, you know what? He's going to give it away. He's going to guarantee it after three months. You guys do it and you go through it. What do you, what do you have to lose? I always say that. Um, you, got, you know, the thing is, got to have some skin in the game when it comes to trading. And everyone doesn't realize that, you know, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of work to train somebody. And yeah, I don't know about over there in Alabama, but they just passed a law here in New York that minimum wage is $15 an hour. OK, for, for my staff to even call and confirm somebody. OK, we lose money on the deal. But the, th the point is this. We're all together as being partners and it's not, you know, we're willing to make an investment in you, you because you know what? We just get sick and tired of seeing lose people losing money. That's really what it comes down to. So um, we're going to uh, just stick around and well, thanks once again. Thanks, out, Tom. And uh, listen, we got to meet up again. So let's try to get that done. It's been a while, you know. We did we did a lot of events together, but uh, but what we're gonna do, guys, right now is uh, we're gonna we'll give you guys thanks, some time. Thanks, Fausto. See you. You're more you're more than welcome, Tom. And uh, I always appreciate those Sunday morning phone calls you give me. <laughs> he goes, I have epiphany. I gotta talk to you, Fausto. So uh, what do you think of this trade? Think of that trade. So it's always great that traders always think together.